All right, so Catholics venerate Mary. Hello everyone and welcome back to Immaculate Heart of Mary Catholic Church and our Family Youth Night series. If you've been following these videos, you know that the Old Testament is full of prefigurations of Jesus. But it doesn't stop with Jesus. There's also prefigurations of the cross in the Old Testament, of the sacraments like baptism and confirmation. Uh, and of course, there's also prefigurations of Mary. Today, our question is, why do Catholics venerate Mary? First off, it's important to say that I'm going to use one example of typology. I'm going to use one prefiguration from the Old Testament to communicate to you why Mary's important. Um, it's by no means the only one and by no means all of what would be called Mariology or the study of Mary. So please look into it as well. In order to answer the question though, it's important that we understand the prefigurations in the Old Testament, um, which is the study of typology. What I want you all to understand, it's not it's not just a study. This idea of typology being a study of scripture, it's not just that. It's actually more accurate to say that typology is one of the ways God communicates important theological truths to us. It's a language of God. He used the prefigurations in the Old Testament to prepare humanity to accept the more difficult teachings that Christ would bring in the New Testament. For example, events like Noah leading his family through the flood, or Moses leading the Israelites through the Red Sea, those events helped pr prepare humanity to accept Jesus' teaching on baptism. Just as Noah led his family out of a sinful world and into a new world under God. And just as Moses led the Israelites out of slavery and out of that, the life of idolatry that they fell into in Egypt and brought them into a new life under God. So too does Jesus bring us out of our original sin, out of our old sinful life and into a new life of grace through the waters of baptism. Anyways, back to Mary. We'll use one prefiguration in today's video to keep it short. And that prefiguration is the Ark of the Covenant. Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant. You'll remember that the Ark of the Covenant was the holiest item in ancient Israel. God led Israel through the wilderness by means of the Ark. The Ark was always at the front of Israel as they marched through the wilderness. So how can we say that Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant? To answer this question, we need to look at how God used parallels to prove his point in scriptures. I'm gonna show you two different stories one from the Gospel of Luke and one from the Old Testament in 2 Samuel. This is Luke chapter 1, verse 39, and it's the story of when Mary goes to Elizabeth or the visitation. In Luke chapter 1, verse 39, we read these words. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why is it granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came into my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And we go to verse 56, we read, And Mary remained with her about three months and returned to her home. That's something that a lot of us have remembered from growing up. Or it's a very familiar Bible story. How does this reading show that Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant? Let's take a look at the main points of what happens in this reading. First, Mary arose and went to the hill country of Judah. Second, John leaps for joy at the hearing of Mary's voice, at Elizabeth specifically hearing Mary's voice. Three, Elizabeth exclaims, Blessed are you among women. How is it that the mother of my Lord should come to me? And finally, the last part that we read was that Mary stays with Elizabeth for three months in the hill country of Judah. Okay. So remember these four points. Now we're going to jump into 2 Samuel chapter 6. In this section, we look at the person of King David. If you don't know King David, King David was one of the greatest figures in the Old Testament. 
He is the man who killed Goliath. He's the man that became the head of Israel. And in this section of 2 Samuel, David is actually coming back to Jerusalem after warding off an attack from the Philistine army. This happened right after David made Jerusalem, the capital city. They made king, the city of David, the capital city of, is, of Israel. And they had not yet brought the Ark of the Covenant into the city. In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 2, we read that David arose with his men and he went out to the hill country of Judah. And he does this to go reclaim, retrieve the Ark of the Covenant and bring it into Jerusalem. While they're bringing the Ark back to Jerusalem, the chariot driver, who's driving the cart that the Ark of the Covenant is on, touches the Ark of the Covenant and dies. And because of this, David hesitates to actually bring the Ark into the city. And he says, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? Instead of bringing the ark into the city, he puts it in a house outside of the city walls, in the house of Obed-Edom. That took me like four times to get that name right. Obed-Edom, okay. The Gittite. Obed-Edom the Gittite. And how long does it stay in Obed-Edom's house? Three months, outside of the city of Jerusalem. But eventually David is convinced that by bringing the Ark of the Covenant into the city, it will bless him and his house and his city. And so he brings it in, and as it comes into the house, David leaps for joy. He dances with all his might. So I hope you can see these parallels. And if you were a first century Jew who knew your scriptures, these would jump out at you. You would absolutely know David. You would absolutely know the story of the Ark of the Covenant coming back into Jerusalem and you would know that David made a fool out of himself by dancing in front of the entire city, so much so that his daughter gets ticked off at him and thinks that he's being, um, I don't know, improper. But not only do the events themselves happen, where they happen is important too. To first century Jews, locations had theological relevance. They had theological importance. And both of the things that happened with David and with what had happened to Mary happened in the same region outside of the city of Jerusalem. And it wouldn't be one of my videos if we don't go on a side note, so. Isn't it interesting how David hesitated to bring the Ark of the Covenant into his city? And isn't it interesting how Joseph hesitated to bring Mary into his house? Both of them perceived what they thought was an evil. And it wasn't until they were convinced that by bringing the Ark into their home, to be a good thing, did they actually do it? And as a sub side note, you might remember from a previous video what was inside of the Ark of the Covenant. A jar of manna, the miraculous bread from heaven. It contained the staff of Aaron or the staff of the high priest. And it contained the Ten Commandments or the law of God. And what did Mary contain within her? She contained Jesus, who, can, who is the perfect bread from heaven that gives us life. He is the one and only true high priest, and he is the new fulfilled law of love. And here it's also worth mentioning that Old Testament prefigurations are never greater than their New Testament fulfillments. So if the Old Testament bread from heaven, the manna in the desert, kept the Israelites alive, alive physically, then how much greater is Jesus in the Eucharist? who gives us life, who Jesus himself said, unless you eat the flesh and drink my blood, you don't have life within you. Anyway, let's get back to Mary. The final point I would add is that if you have any doubts that Mary is the new Ark of the Covenant, again, you don't have to take my word for it. You can find it in the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation itself pretty much tells us that Mary is in fact the new Ark of the Covenant. At the very end of chapter 11 and verse 19 of the book of Revelation, the temple of God in heaven is opened up to a very dramatic effect. There's thunder clashes, there's lights, and it says that the Ark of, a Covenant, Ark of the Covenant can be seen in God's heavenly temple. Unfortunately, right there in the scriptures, it goes to a new chapter, and that's such a bummer because that makes us, with our contemporary minds, think it should be separated when it shouldn't be. At the very end, it's giving us the dramatic opening of the temple and showing us the Ark of the Covenant. And in chapter 12, it's telling us what the Ark of the Covenant is. And what is the Ark of the Covenant in chapter 12? It's a woman clothed with the sun and moon who has a crown with 12 gems in it and is with child. 
She gives birth to that child, and there's a seven-headed dragon, the devil, who wants to devour it. That child is Jesus. The woman is Mary. Bibles didn't actually have chapters or verses until the 13th century, and so those aren't actually divinely inspired. They're there for us and our convenience to track it and to find locations in the Bible easily. I think that the chapter break between Revelations chapter 11 and Revelations chapter 12 is a very unfortunate place for a chapter break. So what can we gather from all this? If Mary is crowned in heaven, and she is wearing the sun, and she stands above the earth, and she's got a crown of 12 gems. If she's crowned the queen of Israel, all of us, baptized faithful, become the new Israel. She's the queen of all of us. But not only is she the queen of us, she's the queen of the universe. She's clothed in the sun. She is above the moon. And if she is the queen, she ought to be honored. She ought to be respected and revered. Just like the Jews honored and revered the Ark of the Covenant in the Old Testament without committing adultery, so too do we, Catholics, love, honor, and revere Mary without taking away any glory from Jesus. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please share this video with anyone who you think may benefit from watching it, and please join me in prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Father, thank you for the gift of your Holy Mother, Mary. Thank you for giving us a perfect example of motherhood. Help us to grow in our love for her. Help us to know that you gave her to us as a mediator between us and you. That you gave her to us as that loving mother that will bring her children to you, Christ Jesus. Help us understand this. Help us connect with it as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Most Holy Trinity, I adore you, my God, my God. I love you in the most blessed sacrament. Amen. God bless everyone.